Hello my sunshines. This week on Water Wednesday I'm sharing my little story about MRSA. Now last week I did a little feature of my son and how I'm treating his ringworm using the Strong Acidic 2.5. I also covered with you guys in that little video how the water machines were actually sent away to the EPA testing labs where they tested the 2.5's ability to kill bacteria and I covered in there as well how there were five strains of bacteria that when exposed to the 2.5 for 30 seconds killed 99.999% of the bacteria, which is fantastic. And those bacteria were Salmonella, E. coli, Golden Staph, MR, MR, MRSA, and CRKP. Now, a lot of people have heard of Golden Staph, E. coli, and Salmonella. But when you mention the words MRSA or MRSA or CRKP, a lot of people go, well, what's that? So um, for me personally, I caught MRSA when we were living up in Derby. What is it? It stands for Methicillin Resistant Staphylococcus aureus, which in a nutshell is an antibiotic resistant strain of golden staph. Now, golden staph is a bacteria that lives on your skin and up your nose. It's never usually an issue for the healthy person. But if your skin gets broken, whether it be through a bite, a scratch, a scrape, whatever, once that bacteria, that golden staph bacteria, gets into your skin, it causes an infection. The infection is usually treated with methicillin antibiotics. There's only two strains of MRSA. One is a healthcare associated strain, which you catch when you go to hospitals. The other strain is a community associated strain, which is the one that I've got. Now, over time, um, genetically, and microbiologically, it has changed. It's uniquely changed. And it's become a bit of a problem because it's become resistant to the treatment of not just methicillin antibiotics, but a lot of other different types as well. And it's a more severe infection that you get. Um, for me, I got that infection in my elbow. You'll still be able to see the scar that I've got there. Um, I thought it was a mosquito bite when I first got it and after about a week and a half I soon realised that it wasn't because there was, it looked, it, ended, it was pretty disgusting, it looked like there was a big boil under the skin and there was a red ring around it. I felt a little bit off and, um, and it was sore, you know, I had a bit of a temperature don't usually like going to the hospital but because it was giving me a bit of strife and I found it hard to lift my arm without it throbbing I thought go on toddle off to the hospital go and get it seen to so off I went and they gave me some antibiotics came home was taking them for about four days and after four days I was feeling vile I had really high temps I felt like I wanted to vomit and my arm a little fat arm <laughs> Now, I'm a shouty mum. Everyone who knows me knows that I shout at my kids because that's just, they only listen when they get shouted at. Every time I went to raise my voice, I got this shrieking pain down my arm and, um, and throbbing. It felt like it was going to explode. It was just horrible. And um, I was weak. I just couldn't move anyway. So um, my little sissy, she's a nurse. And when I rung her to say, like, what do you think? She was like, Lee, you need to get back there, like, ASAP. If you get... Um, you know, cellulitis, and then if you get septicemia, you could die. And I was like, oh my God. So I went straight back to the hospital and um, they cut it open and sent a little sample off to get tested to make sure, you know, see what it was. And they were like, uh, we're gonna have to put you on two different types of antibiotics to make sure that we kill whatever's going on there. But you've definitely got a cyst under there. You've definitely got cellulitis. Um, and yeah, let's just, keep taking these, come see us in a couple of days. If it's not taken care of and it's not starting to get better, then you'll have to go on an IV drip. I was like, okay, no worries. So I went home, started taking those antibiotics and oh, they just made me feel like I wanted to vomit 24 seven. It was horrendous. And because I was on 
the two different types of antibiotics and a repeat of that, I ended up having to take eight tablets a day for a month. So I felt like I had morning sickness for a month. I felt like I just wanted to vomit all the time. I mean, don't get me wrong, slowly but surely it cleared it up, but I felt shit while I was on them. And in the end, the cyst was still there. And even though the temperature had gone, the red ring had gone, that real terrible, terrible throbbing, piercing pain had gone, it was still really sore in the area and I couldn't really touch it. But you know, I was too scared to go back to the hospital and show them because I didn't want anyone to touch it. I didn't want anyone going near it. After the first time they cut it open, I was like, no one's coming near me now, mate. There was no anesthetic and they were like, <coughs> so I was like, don't. Never, never know. I excised it myself and took out the little cyst sack and it was just the best thing ever. I've got like a sick obsession with, you know, that Dr. Pimple Popper, whatever her name is. And I was just loving every minute of it. After having my treatment, I got issued a letter from the, from the government saying, congratulations, you've got MRSA. They didn't really say congratulations, um, but they did say that I had to take the letter into any any um, procedure that I need to have done in the future, forever. Like, yes, I was gutted, but I um, I know that I can treat it now. And if given the choice between antibiotics that make you feel next level sick, or an antibacterial water that kills. MRSA. Mate, I know which one I'm doing. I'm very grateful knowing that I've got it. So yeah, that's my story. Um, bit of a depressing story, I know, but just know, party people, that yes, it is infectious, but unless you see a dirty big boil on my arm, you know that I'm not infectious, right? Okay, so you don't have to be like this when you see me. Like, Leanne, don't come near me, you've got MRSA. <laughs> I've got to admit, I was a bit embarrassed to share this story with you. And it shouldn't be embarrassing, but, you know, it is something that I think is like a dirty person's disease. And I'm not a dirty person, I'm not. But it is what it is, I've got it, and I've got to deal with it now. But unless I've got an infection, I'm not infectious, okay? So don't be scared to come and give me a hug. <laughs> No, but for reals, I wanted to share this with you. The reason I wanted to share my story with you is in opening up and laying all my embarrassing cards on the table is to help you. If you've got M MRSA or CRKP or golden staff of any kind and you don't want to treat it with antibiotics that make you feel sick or antibiotics in general, you want something that you've got at home in your house that you can treat anytime you get it, then, you know, holler. If you want to know more about it, call me, message me. I've got a website you can visit if you want to go on and have a look. It's www.lovelieswater.com or there's another one. It's www.theanagicmagic.com. Go onto the website, have a little look. It's got all the prices there. It's got all the information about all the different things that those waters can actually do. It's not just what I've explained, there's a list as long as your bloody arm of all the different things that the different types of waters can be used for and do in your home or for your health. It's just fab. So go and have a look. You can also put your email address in and it'll send you a little newsletter which gives you all the information. So do it, jump on and do that. You, um, you'll be really blown away. I know that my Looking Lovely business page is a hair and beauty business page, but Water Wednesdays are reserved specifically for the uses of the Kangen water. So I'm gonna be showing you a whole heap of things that this water can do and it's not gonna be all related to hair and beauty so if you see some random thing pop up with my husband cleaning the tires on our motor or me cleaning the bloody toilet bowl <laughs> to show you how good it can sparkle don't be alarmed it's water wednesdays is reserved for that side of the business which is um the kangan water and the enagic machines so look out for that it's going to be interesting it's going to be a blast it's going to be funny and it's going to be informative <laughs>